Hey guys, I got asked to fix up this PC, an old school high-end Dell XPS from 2007. At least it was supposed to be. I was told that this was bought for parts are not working and its original components through sparks and smoke. Yep, so they were swapped out unfortunately. But I have more telling problems. For one, the bundles of cables and tape, and oh my lord, the dust. We can be PC elitists, it's easy to be that, but when you're told that this is the owner's dream PC and it looks like this, uh, uh whatever. This machine in particular has an Intel Core 2 Quad Q6700, a quad core 2.6 GHz, with 6 GB of DDR2 RAM on a Dell Precision motherboard with an XFX HD5850 and a Corsair VS350 power supply. Again, not XPS parts, but at least it's been rigged in working order. After a quick dusting and bringing it inside, let's see what we're dealing with. Oh, buggery fuck. The owner said that Destiny 2 runs a bit laggy, so let's have a look. Oh dear. It could either be the one gigabyte of VRAM from our graphics card, or the low clock speeds of our Core 2 Quad, Either way, they're both pegged, and I'd consider this, well, unplayable. To test what's causing the low frame rates, I decided to put in my best card, this RX 574GB. Well, we would have if AMD's drivers played nicely. After trying different ones while using DDU over the course of two days, I gave up. But then I'm surprised that this PC didn't destroy my 570. At this point, I could only do one thing, and that's to clean this whole PC up into something that resembles a dream. Our first step is the graphics card. A few screws, and we're able to access the heatsink, which blow style cards are pretty susceptible to dust buildup. The thermal paste was also pretty solidified, so replacing that, as well as cleaning the heatsink and everything else really, would certainly help with temperatures. Now looking clean, this thing actually looks cool. The glossy shrouds somehow win me over with cards in that era. <laughs> Onto the deep end. This PC is nothing like I've worked on before. For one, the motherboard is BTX an incompatible standard from ATX, as well as having this proprietary cooler, proprietary fan connectors, and a flex cable shoved through the back as a means of turning it on. That's because the precision, nor the XPS front panels are compatible with each other. So yeah, proprietary. In this case, however, the XPS front panel is used to power on the uh, case LEDs, and it's just shoved inside. Um. Guess we have our own priorities. There was also some attempt at getting the power button to work, but didn't work out because, uh, well, front panel, proprietary. Now that the parts are out of the way, we can learn of the XPS case and its construction. It's covered in thick slabs of aluminium or stainless steel, which serves as its structure. Something unseen in modern cases due to more materials and, well, it costs more to make. This means that this case is remarkably sturdy and heavy. Additional features include built-in front RGB LEDs, some cable management tabs, and being quite toolless. Ahead of its time, but if I'm spending four to six thousand dollars on a new computer, even in 2007, it better have them. Fully stripping down this case though is something else. You need very long screwdrivers to unscrew a few points behind the drive cages, and after a dozen more, the other side panel can be removed. And at this point, the case becomes fragile. I'd describe its construction as brute force. Instead of manipulating sheet steel to make a sound structure, you can just bolt on a, s a thick slab, I guess. But anyways, we can finally remove the front panel and access those case LEDs, as well as the rear panel. This PC certainly has seen better days. Uh, funnily enough though, I told the owner there is a lot of dust and they rebutted by saying it's not that bad. Well, it is. Okay, if you're still here, let's actually and finally clean this thing. 
jet water with brush genuinely does wonders to anything this manky. After a quick dry, we can assemble this whole thing together, piece by piece. Before putting everything back together though, I wanted to try one more thing. There is this 775 mod where if you cover a pin or two, specifically BSEL and probably VCC, or maybe VSS as well, you can increase the front side boss from 266 MHz to 333, overclocking the Q6700 in particular from 2.6 GHz to 3.3. Ah oh, yes! <laughs> This is amazing. I'm sorry that the mic quality is terrible, but look at this, baby. Yes. 3.3 gigahertz. I love this. I absolutely love this. I just hope that, uh, oh, Jesus Christ. What does that say? Uh, system service exception. And subsequent B-sods give the uh, Wii uh, uncorrectable error, most likely caused by our overclock. I figured it could be the lack of stable power delivery from this particular motherboard. I mean, just look at it. And so your results will vary, I guess. It's not like we can slap in a high-end 775 board either. This case can only accept BTX, so options for a decent setup here are limited. <sighs> whatever. Bedtime. Now we need to tackle what I dread the most, sorting out the power button and LEDs. I unravel the tape to find an amalgamation of solders. This needs cleaning. My only long wiring was from a busted power supply I reluctantly received, so at least that's that. A bit of heat shrink and this power button looks a hell of a lot cleaner. To actually connect this though to the Dell Precision motherboard, which is proprietary, you need to do a bit of digging. Ah, there it is. I was asked to make the power button LED work, but without the correct parts, I uh, refused to go through any lens just for a little light. Now for the LEDs themselves. For some reason, the owner wanted to keep the Dell 5-pin connectors on these LEDs, which at this stage there is no reason to keep, and that the main look of them irritate me, so I cut the middleman and desoldered the female connectors from the front panel. I wish I recorded that now and soldered them onto the SATA connector, where they'll be powered. As mentioned before, these LEDs are RGB, so a controller hub can work. They just need to undo all the work that I've done here. Now, this is where I can finally express myself, as if this is my personal build. So, with a pack of zip ties and a lot of thinking, I get into it. And problems. For one, the VS350's PCIe cable is too short for this case, and the cooler shroud gets in the way, so I decided to route the Molex cables underneath it. With the X and 4 dots, because I'm feeling it, the cooler is mushed down.
with a lick of bumper shine. Here it is, a fully cleaned Dell uh, am amalgamation of parts in an XPS case. At this point, I could for once begin appreciating the looks of this case, now that its black plastic is glossy and deep, and its parts, though unoriginal, can be showcased. And so, here's what I'm getting at. It's your PC, you can do whatever you want, but if it's your dream build, treat it as if it actually is. It's your pride and joy, and if I see neglect, it gives me doubt as to whether you're telling me the truth. And as for the computer itself, the case looks good. It's unnecessarily heavy, but the features are appreciated even 13 years later. It is, however, overshadowed by pretty much everything else. Almost everything is proprietary, including the long dead BTX form factor, which means any meaningful upgrades are impossible. Unless you convert the case to ATX, there are plenty of these conversions, and I don't blame them. If you've grown fond of its 50s slash futuristic design, you'd go to hell or high water to make it work. And when you look it up, there are some gorgeous customizations. I don't know if the original XPS parts allow overclocking, or if they can accept the B-cell tape mod, but for their price, availability, and how proprietary they are, I wouldn't even bother getting them. You can get a nice 775 board, once you've done the ATX conversion, that can guarantee overclocking support. But even then, my recommendation is to ditch 775 completely, since Sandy Bridge, Ivy Bridge, and Haswell parts are cheap enough with some room for upgrades. Regardless, I love it when these case mods are done, because for one, these heavy things are saved from landfill, and its original proprietary parts are actually in them. Sometime later, I built in this Cooler Master Half XM with standardized parts, and uh, I feel blessed. Thanks for watching. If you happen to disagree with anything I've said, be sure to leave a dislike and leave a nasty comment. I can't wait to read them. See you soon.